It is 2 p.m. Friday on the 8th of March across New Caledonia, and we are closely monitoring newly formed Tropical Cyclone Sandra located in the Coral Sea. Sandra is currently a Category 1 cyclone on the Australian cyclone scale, and it is forecast to reach Category 3 severe cyclone intensity by Saturday and Sunday. You can see that the forecasted motion of the storm is expected to be rather slow over the next few days, but a gradual turn toward the southeast is likely over the next 48 to 72 hours. Meanwhile, the latest forecast from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center is very similar, with very slow motion over the next two to three days with a gradual bend toward the southeast. This track would pose more of a threat towards New Caledonia in the four to five day period. However, I must stress that four and five day cyclone forecasts contain a lot of margin for error, so the cyclone could be as far west as the central coral sea, or as far east as being directly over New Caledonia, or even the extreme southern islands of Vanuatu. More than anything, for interest out across Queensland, this is not looking like a direct threat to Australia at this time, although we still encourage everyone in the region to keep a very close watch on this developing cyclone, and the same can be said for residents out across Fiji. At this time, it looks as though the cyclone will make a turn towards the south before continuing that far east, as a matter of fact, until Cyclone Sandra crosses 160 degrees east longitude, the Fiji Meteorological Services will not even be posting updates on Sandra until it gets a little closer. This afternoon's visible satellite animation reveals that Tropical Cyclone Sandy is slowly organizing. We see a new flare-up of convection that appears to be forming directly near or just to the west of the low-level surface circulation and we can also see this on the enhanced color representation. You can see some of the colder cloud tops associated with some of the stronger thunderstorm activity near or just west of the center once again. And notice that the cyclone does not appear to be impeded in any of its quadrants. You can see that the storm is expanding rather nicely. And we can see the reason why the conditions are so favorable for development on the water vapor. You like to see the storm being ventilated with outflow channels both to the south and toward the north and we see the poleward outflow channel really expanding toward the south into the central and southern coral sea thanks to a lot of troughing that's out across the southern pacific including new caledonia all these westerly winds are allowing those upper level clouds to fan out towards the south and towards the east and also thanks to the presence of a mid to upper level ridge located directly over the storm that's also helping to provide more outflow towards the equatorward side of the tropical cyclone and then we have yet another upper level low that's coming in across Queensland and this is also helping to fan out the poleward outflow channel. So when you put it all together the conditions are very favorable with very light upper level winds centered almost directly over the storm and this is why both the JTWC and Bureau of Meteorology are forecasting intensification into the equivalent of a severe cyclone on the Australian scale and sea surface temperatures being that we're still in early March are more than adequate for rapid intensification and I think that rapid intensification is somewhat likely in this case due to the extreme level of upper level ridging that we just saw on satellite imagery and the wind shear chart and I firmly believe that the peak intensity will be closer towards category 4 intensity before all is said and done Finally, beyond days 3 and 4, the cyclone will likely begin to weaken as it starts to cross into sub-26 degrees Celsius water temperatures as it curves more so towards the south. And also as that recurvature begins to take shape, it's likely going to be feeling the effects of westerly winds associated with upper level troughing that is inducing that more southerly component of the track. In terms of the steering factors, we can see based on the latest steering chart the reason why the cyclone is unlikely to move rather quickly anytime soon. You can see that as of right now there is a battle between ridging toward the south which would like to promote more of a westerly track towards Queensland. However we have contrasting influences to the north and east that are trying to promote more of a track towards New Caledonia and Vanuatu. For example we still have westerly flow immediately to the north of the cyclone embedded within the monsoon trough and we also have lingering troughing out across the southern Pacific and Vanuatu along with New Caledonia. So both of these factors would promote more of an easterly track away from Queensland. And as of right now, it's somewhat of a stalemate, but over time we are expecting this ridge to slowly break down or shift more towards the west as we get more troughing coming in from the southern Indian Ocean that eventually works its way over towards this region and it reinforces the troughing that's already in place over the southern Pacific. So overall we are expecting the troughs to capture 
the tropical cyclone before it has any chance to move back towards Australia. With that in mind, we're going to take a look at some of the recent model guidance and the American Forecast Model, also known as the Global Forecast System or GFS, is probably still gaining a lot of attention out across Queensland because the past several runs of the GFS have shown a turn toward the south within the next three to five days. But beyond day five, it's not only showing that southerly turn, but also a turn back towards the Australian coast with a final landfall somewhere between Rockhampton and Brisbane. And this is still something that we definitely need to consider when making a forecast. However, the GFS does have its share of problems, and it's the only model that is showing a track back towards Australia at this time. So it's best to take this particular forecast with a grain of salt. So in order to figure out the reason why the GFS is suggesting this more westerly track, we need to take a look at the mid-level steering forecast, and initially everything lines up the way it's supposed to, because as we saw with the steering chart, we do have this ridge, and it is fairly strong at the moment. It's currently up to 588 decameters, which is quite notable. And as we go into 24, 48, 72, and 96 hours, so by day four, the ridge is still ha hanging tough out across the southern areas, and as long as it persists toward the south, just underneath the tropical cyclone, there will be that chance that it captures the system and pulls it back toward the west. However, as you will soon see, the GFS is the only model maintaining the strength of this ridge all the way through the forecast period. For example, the latest run of the European ECMWF model has a completely different take on the overall steering. As we go into 24 hours, you can see the tropical cyclone becoming more prominent on this imagery as it intensifies, but we still have the 588 decameter ridge immediately toward the south. Things begin to change as we work our way into 48 and 72 hours. The main core of ridging shifts more so towards the Pilbara and Western Australia as the overall pattern becomes more amplified. What do I mean by more amplified? Well, you can see that we have a very strong trough approaching from the Southern Indian Ocean and the immediate response to this very strong trough approaching is for ridging to develop downstream and intensify and that is why the ridging has shifted more so towards the Pilbara coastline to offset the strength of this approaching trough. So what does all of this mean for the Cyclone Sandra forecast? Well without the ridging being right along the eastern Australia coastline there's nothing to push this back towards the west and without ridging being anywhere in the area we start to see the reinforcement of troughing out across the southern Pacific which should eventually lower the tropical cyclone more so toward the southeast and as of right now New Caledonia faces the greatest risk of being directly impacted by Cyclone Sandra and the five-day forecast from this particular model shows the center of the storm passing along the western half of the big island just to the west of Numia and it looks as though the cyclone could be weakening at this time and this could be the result of increasing wind shear down the road however once again I will state that the four and five day forecasts both in regards to the track and intensity of cyclones result in a lot of margin of error furthermore the operational run of the ECMWF does have support from all of its ECMWF ensemble members as you can see, the average of all of the European model members takes the storm in that direction towards New Caledonia as we go into day five, day six, and as we go into day seven, it's continuing to weaken as it moves over cooler waters of the Southern Pacific and Coral Sea. The latest 12Z run of the UK Met model is only available online through 72 hours, but through those two to three days, you can see that the cyclone is forecast to move towards lower Vanuatu and New Caledonia. In addition, the latest run from the Canadian CMC model is in agreement with the more easterly solution. You can see that as we go into 36 hours and then eventually into day three, the cyclone is quickly approaching Vanuatu, and this is the easternmost model solution at this time. Of course, Vanuatu does have to pay very close attention to Sandra because we cannot completely discount this idea. And if the storm does begin to gain a much quicker easterly component, within the next two to three days then that would add some credibility to this more easterly forecast and as we go into day four and day five it's making that turn into the South Pacific as it starts to slowly weaken and finally this is a look at the Canadian CMC ensemble mean so just like we observed the operational run of the ECMWF and then we went on to look at the ensemble average this is the same deal with the CMC this time around and we're also seeing agreement with that more easterly solution 
So it's basically all the global models versus the American GFS. The GFS is the only model showing a track more so towards Queensland, and it does not appear to be a very likely solution at this time. So all interests out across New Caledonia and the central and southern islands of Vanuatu need to be making preliminary plans for a cyclone landfall, and it could be of severe intensity. For more cyclone updates, all you have to do is visit 28storms.com, click on the Cyclones page, and here you will find links to official sources, for example, the Bureau of Meteorology, and this will expand with more links that become available directly below. And all of these video updates that are posted are not only on our YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to, but they will also be uploaded within the website itself. So you really can't miss the updates as long as you subscribe and bookmark 28storms.com.